I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. And coming this way, my beautiful wife, Natash. Hello. We're uh, getting into Leviticus 9. So let's open up in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you. Again, so thankful that we can read your word, your word that's life, liberty, happiness, all of it, Lord God. You're so great, you're so beautiful, you're so awesome. We love you so much, we praise you so much. We thank you for your love to us. We love you because you first loved us. So we ask you right now to open up our minds, our hearts, our spirits to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we also ask for blessings for upcoming year 2023. <laughs> uh, we wish you a happy new year, uh, wonderful things in upcoming year, um, good resolutions, and hopefully one of them is um, to watch our podcast frequently and <laughs> not just to watch, but re-watch again and again um, until you actually sink in into your subconscious mind all this information that God presents us and most importantly a daily uh, follow of his instruction and um, this way by the end of the year 2023 uh, you're going to see tremendous difference in your life in your relationship um, in your um, relationship with loved ones and also in your relationship with God Amen. So in chapter 9 of Leviticus, uh, it's interesting that God uh, brought us a new um, important character of, um, of human is a focus, right? It's, uh, he, he mentioned how important it is to separate yourself from the world and get in this focus condition um, in, in get this instruction and in relationship with God. And it brought uh, to my mind um, and to my memory interviews that um, were done completely separate from each other. And the interview between uh, Warren Buffett, uh, Bill Gates, and now Elon Musk. And they all three been asked the same question. Actually, Elon Musk wasn't asked. He actually brought it up. But uh, Bill Gates and uh, Warren Buffett, he was asked one question. What is absolutely one trait of your character that absolute only one trait you would say the most important that brought you to success? And both of them said independently from each other is focus. So um, in this chapter, we're learning about this new trait of the characters, how important it is to separate yourself from the world and focus on your relationship with God. Also, this chapter bring us to all this, if you remember, we had this preparation, right? Going through so many details that shows us how particular Lord really is. And it's brought us on this incredible event of Lord, uh, Lord appealing to uh, his children. And uh, we're going to uh, look at the Exodus 24, 15 and 16, showing that um, at that time, um, people actually, I mean, children of Israel actually had a choice to come or not to come to God. And the Leviticus 9, it's no longer an option. It's required, right? It's required to go through the certain, uh, certain instructions for you, be, for you to be able to sustain God. And um, lastly, the Lord is going to show himself in the fire, right and uh duality of this we know he can be as a fire or he can uh, can be as a a shekinah glory right this beautiful glory uh you probably notice sometimes uh people tell you well you're just glowing you know you're just like full of this happiness and uh incredible joy and we would strongly recommend you uh to look at the podcast of uh brian melvin so he happened to be uh, had a, have a near death experience in one case when he was um, actually sent to hell and see what is hell about. And a second time, just like John and Paul and Apostle Paul, he was sent that he had experience out of his body 
not near death experience, just, just just at night when God showed him heaven. And when he came back, this strangely enough, at his church, at his own church, where he was worked so hard after visiting hell and understanding how serious things can be, um, that everybody started telling him that you're glowing. Right. You have this incredible glow and last for three days. And it, it bring our memory back to Moses right. when he was with God. He had to put a veil on his face. I know. <laughs> he uh, glowed too much being 40 days and 40 nights. Exactly right. With, uh, with God. And in the in, uh, case of Brian Melvin, I guess Brian Melvin, Melvin please take a look at his uh, uh, podcast. I think this is the best podcast we ever heard from uh, near this experience and experience when uh, God uh, sent you to to heaven to experience the beauty of it and bring this experience to others and share with it. And and another thing, let me interject. Mm -hmm. Well, why did God give him uh, this taste of hell? Because he was a devout God hating, and let me just emphasize that God hating, not disbelieving. They know there's a God, atheist. They know there's a God, they hate him, and they hate Christians, right? Don't tell me you don't believe, you know God's there. You just hate him. Okay, well take a taste of hell, because here's where you're going. What happened? He woke up. <laughs> he saw the light. And, oh, and when he was with Jesus, because he was an atheist, Jesus had a veil over his face, like Moses had a veil, right? Why? Because you can't experience me right now, why? because you're filthy, right? You're a sinner, you're an atheist, you're a God eater. Well, he became a Christian. Next time he goes to heaven, there's Jesus. <laughs> All smiles, no veil, why? Because yeah. he's going down the right direction, right? Very right. Different. Very different, very opposite. Very opposite. Very, very opposite. And lastly, uh, we're going to talk again about blessings of God. And we're going to look at a couple of different verses in the Bible that talks about blessings of God and just the experience to have them. And uh, so we're chapter 9, Leviticus. Here we go. Chapter 9, Leviticus. And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. These would be warriors, you know, generals, the head people of Israel, religious people. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, without blemish, perfect, like Jesus Christ, and offer them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish, for a burnt offering. So not like a, a full-blown bullock, right? 12, 1,500-pound bull. But, you know, we've got, we've got a goat and a sheep here for the people. Also, a bullock and a ram for peace offering. Now these aren't sin offerings, right? Now this is a peace offering to sacrifice before the Lord and a meat offering mingled with oil for today the Lord will appear unto you. God is going to appear to the people of Israel. He's going to appear in his Shekinah glory, right? Let's we'll see if they can handle it. So basically, we um, the previous chapter went through all this preparation of priests to be able to uh, perform, right? Mm -hmm. Perform this is the very last step for the Lord to appear to children of Israel. And now we actually going through all kind of offerings, right? So we have sin offerings. We have offerings that... Um, uh, called burn offerings, if you remember, lamb and uh, one lamb in the morning, one lamb at night, one lamb in the mor morning, one lamb at, ni at night, to load the energy of the uh, um, tabernacle, 
so people will be able to sustain. And we also see peace offering, and we also see meat offering mingling with oil. Right, right? So something you, that can be eaten. Yeah, so as you can see, there is a uh, finalizing basically all this little, this is how particular Lord is. Right, so so when you're doing something, it takes a lot of step to get somewhere, somewhere tremendously wonderful. It takes time, it takes preparation, it takes put pieces together it takes work. in a puzzle, right? A puzzle, uh, all the puzzles together. Yeah, it takes work to right. get that final uh, incredible step that where we're going right now. So again, is that is that a journey is that a destination or is a journey to get this beautiful feeling of accomplishment step by step as we're pre preparing to meet God himself. Right. Yeah. And verse 5. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation and all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. The glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. And Moses said unto Aaron, go into the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded Aaron therefore went under the altar now this isn't Moses anymore what's Moses doing now he's handing the job of high priest over to Aaron his brother you know it gives Moses a break he's getting old right been through a lot let Aaron do it. Let the kids do it, right? Mm -hmm. Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. Priests don't sin. Priests do sin. Everybody, all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. This is a sin offering for the high priest. So if he sins, you know we all sin. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar. Horns represent what? Power. And poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. This is a sin offering. Get rid of the blood. Get it out of the tabernacle. But the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver of the sin offering, he burnt upon the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. And the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the camp, outside in a clean place, but not in the tabernacle. And he slew the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled round about the altar. And they presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof and the head and the he burnt them upon the altar. You know, I want to say one thing. Mm. You know, um, I was in FFA, Future Farmers of America, when I was a freshman in high school, right? <laughs> I was the only guy in my class that didn't have an animal. You got all these people with sheep and chickens or mm. um, goats, pigs, right? Mm. And I can remember, you know, I never was my, my mom, right? If she saw a dead animal in the road, she'd be sick for days. <laughs> she couldn't handle it. So that kind of rubbed off on me. I don't like seeing dead animals or get killed, like... Right? And I can just remember all those kids and everybody, right? They got their little sheep, the girls, everybody. And boy, slaughter day. Can't wait to slaughter their animal that they raised, right? And put it in the freezer, right? Or sell it or do whatever they did, right? And I can just remember the pigs squealing and- the, Okay, okay, okay. Or, why okay, we need all right, to go to this All right, here's house. why. Oh. This is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. When you slaughter a big animal like that, it's not fun and cute. This is as serious as it gets, right? Like when they slaughtered Jesus Christ on the cross. Funny and cute. Oh, Jesus died for our sins. Praise the Lord. Born again. Oh, you know, you got to think about it. You got to really think about it. And he did wash 
the inwards of the legs and burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people and slew it and offered it for sin as the first. And he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to the manner. Whatever Moses said, God commanded him, do it, Aaron, do it, sons. And he brought the meat offering and took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning, morning and evening sacrifices. He slew also the bullock. This is a big one. And the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, lots of blood, which he sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of that bullock and the ram, the rump, and that which covered the inwards and the kidneys and the call above the liver. And they put the fat upon the breasts and he burnt the fat upon the altar and the breasts and the right shoulder. Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord. These are the choice pieces of meat on the animal as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them and came down from offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And this is the first time we notice that um, people got blessed by the priest, right? Right. Through the, through the God guidance, that's the first time we, we see these blessings. So let's do a couple of things um, just for uh, see the differences. Let's go to back to Exodus 24, 15 through 16, and we're going to see how God appeared to children and of Israel prior, so we can compare it with now. Exodus what, 24? Exodus 24, 15 through 16. Okay. All right, Exodus 24. 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud... Okay, is this right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 24, 15? Yeah. Okay, and Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, Mount Sinai, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Where he got the Ten Commandments. Was up there 40 days, 40 nights. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day, something that's what? Spiritual completion, perfection. And on the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount and the eyes of the children of Israel. So, is that it? Yeah. Okay, that, that is so it. a devouring fire. What is God? Devouring fire, consuming fire of those who are evil. What is he to us? Beautiful warmth, Shekinah glory mm -hmm. to his people, right? You don't want to be on his bad side. That's for sure. And we're also going to um, go in the future per, uh, chapter, which is uh, Numbers. Numbers 6.23. Okay, Numbers 6. Six twenty two actually. We start in six twenty two through six twenty six. Six twenty two through six twenty six? Twenty seven actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, just finish it. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee. And keep thee. The 
Lord make his face. We've all heard this before, pretty famous verses. Mm -hmm. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Who needs peace today? I sure do. That's for sure. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Mm -hmm. God puts his name on who? The children of Israel. Gave his covenant to who? The children of Israel. Gave the law, the commandments, the children of Israel. Jesus Christ came through who? Children of Israel. This book is about one thing and one thing alone. The children of Israel. The only time you hear about Egypt, the only time you hear about the uh, Philistines is when they come into contact with the children of Israel. Why? God chose the people. Chosen people. Oh, the, is, God, is God a racist? The, the no. preparation. The, not a racist. The preparation, the lineage that Jesus Christ is going to come and save the rest of the world, including children of Israel and all others, according right. to their free will, right? According to their choice. Okay, and um, back to Leviticus 9, verse 23. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. Why? Because they had the sin offering to clean up, and then they had the peace offerings and the meat offerings to, you know, to um, celebrate. First, you get rid of sin, and then you celebrate, mm -hmm. right? And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, <laughs> hey, they shouted and what? Fell on their faces, right? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, it reminds me of, was it Elijah? I think it was Elijah that went to the prophets of Baal. Um, who was it? Ahab and Jezebel, two of the most wicked uh, king and queens of Israel. And she had all the prophets of Baal, 450 prophets of Baal. And so um, Elijah comes and says, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little contest, right? You guys take a bullock. Put it on your altar, cut it up, and have Baal or Moloch or whoever you got, cook it. Let's see it. And so they put the, you know, they built an altar and they put the bullock onto the altar and Baal ain't coming. <laughs> okay, nothing's happening, right? Moloch ain't coming. Dagon's not coming. No power. Now pretty soon, man, they're going crazy. Damn, they're cutting themselves they're cutting themselves for their God, right? What happens after hours? 450 priests, one priest of God. Elijah against 450 priests of the wicked, wicked queen um, Jezebel. And so he's saying stuff like, you better yell a little louder. <laughs> you know, I think he's far away. Well, maybe he's, you know, maybe he's on the toilet. I mean, who knows where he is? Because he ain't there. He's not real. Idols aren't real. They're fake. Right? Okay. Enough of that. Elijah says, okay, uh, God. Oh, fill the trough. Made a trough. Um, Elijah made a trough around his burnt offering. Guess what he filled it with? Oh, gasoline, of course. Something flammable, right? No, water. He poured water all over the burnt offering. He poured water all over the trough and said what? Yo, cook it, Lord. Boom! Explosion. And then he killed the 450 prophets of Baal. <laughs> and then, what's her name? Um, Jezebel? Mm -hmm. Man, she was hot after him. And now he's running for his life, right? He just... He just destroyed 450 prophets of Baal. And now he's running for his life. And God's like, what's your problem, man? <laughs> Don't you see what you just did or what I just did? You know, 
I just thought that was funny, kind of related to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's the end of the chapter 9. Again, we wish you a happy new year with, with your loved ones, with your family. Uh, celebrate the presence of God in your life. Um, ask Him and it's going to be open to you. And please visit us on the chapter 10 as we continue Leviticus and year of the 2023. <laughs> Amen. Happy New Year. Yeah, well, we're going into 10, and then pretty soon we're going to get into one of my favorites, clean and unclean meats, Leviticus 11. All right, next time.